This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. It is yet another Thursday night when we come to your home and bring you the ever-living, powerful Word of God. The Word that never changes. The Word that brings transformation. The Word that will lift you up. The Word that will catapult you to the top. So get ready. As we partake of the communion tonight, I pray that you will hear the voice of God, that Jehovah will speak into your situation. For when he speaks into a situation, that situation has got to change. I may not know what you are going through. I may not know the battles you are fighting. I may not know how much discouraged you are or how excited you are or how much of the great catch you have already caught. I do not know. But there is this one thing that I know, that Jehovah knows exactly where you are as an individual, and he knows exactly what you need, and our God is a giver. So he will give to you the desires of your heart as you call upon him, as you seek his face, as you ask him, remember what Jesus said? Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened unto you. Ask and you shall receive. So it is upon you to ask. It is upon you to seek. It is upon you to knock. You knock by prayer. You ask by prayer. You ask even by desiring, just desiring. Remember what he said, what he said, Paul says in Ephesians 3.20, Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above that which we ask or think. I do not know how many of us have known the power of the thoughts, the power that is in your thinking. Just in your thinking, God meets you you at the point of your need. God grants to you the desires of your heart. I'm telling you this so you can, you can start raising your expectations, not to Mark, but to God, because it is Jehovah who answers our prayers. Now, tonight is our communion night, and there's a scripture I want us to, co to consider tonight, several scriptures, and we will read. We will, we will go to Hebrews chapter number for three, Hebrews chapter number three and verse number one. In Hebrews chapter number three, verse number one, the writer to the, to the, to the Hebrews says, Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our profession, Jesus Christ. He says, number one, you are holy brethren. He calls us holy brethren. I want you to know, my friends, that holiness is not a feeling. It is not something you feel in your body. Holiness is the position that God puts you in, that you have been set aside. You are prepared for another use. You have been sanctified and set aside. So the writer tells us we are holy brethren. That's how he addresses us. So know this in your Noah. That as the Lord looks at you, he sees you as a holy person. And not only that, but you are also a partaker of the heavenly calling. You are a partaker of the heavenly calling. Our calling is not earthly. It is heavenly. In other words, we have access to the heavens. And in this calling, it is not for us to go alone. You and I are expected to bring people into this calling. That's why the word that the Lord gave us this year is, that it's the, is the year of the great catch. The great catch is not just a fish. It's not just a car or material. It is the souls that you introduce to this heavenly calling. Remember what Paul says in Ephesians, that we are seated together with Christ 
in heavenly places far above all principalities and rulers of darkness. My friend, you and I may be in Langalanga Mwisho. You and I may be in Kivumbini. Maybe you are in Isli. You may be in Modaiga. You may be in Kitisuri, wherever you are. Where right there, in the spiritual realm, you are seated with Christ far above all principalities and powers. How I pray that our eyes would be opened up to the position God has put in. That's why we are being taught to consider. We are being taught to consider the one who has made us sit in heavenly places. He also says to the Ephesians, in Ephesians 1, 3, Blessed be God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. Our calling is heavenly. Our blessings are in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Therefore, we need to consider. He tells us to consider the apostle and high priest of our profession or our confession. Now, it is important for us to capture what he is saying. He's saying that in this position that we have been placed by the Lord, the position of holiness and the position of being partakers of the heavenly calling has, an, has a high priest. It has a high priest. And this high priest is Christ Jesus. It's Christ Jesus. He is the apostle and the high priest. Therefore, we sit in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. Oh, glory to God. We can see our blessings in the spiritual realm and identify them and then now turn them into the realm of the physicality, the realm of tangibility, where we can handle them with our hands, where we see them with our eyes. But we are being told to consider to consider what? The high priest of our profession or our confession. Now we've got to understand, we've got to understand that you receive Jesus by your confession. In the book of Romans, in Romans chapter number 10, in Romans chapter number 10 and verse number 9. Let's go to verse number 8. Verse number eight. But what does it say? The word is near you, even in your mouth. My friend, the word is in your mouth. The word is in you and in your heart. And this word, that is the word of faith, which we preach. We have been called to preach the word of God. Our heavenly calling is to, is to preach this word. Now verse number nine, it says, that if you shall confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. My friend, don't let anyone deceive you that you cannot be saved. Don't let anybody deceive you that salvation is very hard. I want you to know that Jesus has done everything. Everything was accomplished at the cross. When Jesus said, it is finished. Now you qualify to join this band of those who have a heavenly calling. You qualify to join this group of the holy brethren by the placement of God. How do you do that? You do that by believing in your heart and confessing with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. You shall be 
saved. It's as simple as that. Every believer needs to know this because this is the weapon that helps you in the great catch. This is the net that you use for the great catch. This is the hook that you use for the great catch. That everything is in you. What verse number eight? What says it? What does it say? The word is near you. If you are walking close to a person who is not born again, you are living next to somebody who is born again. The word is right there. What you tell them is the word is in your mouth and it is in your heart. Let me tell you, my friend, lots of Kenyans believe, even those who call themselves atheists, they still believe. They still believe. So the word is in your heart. This is the word of faith which we preach. If you will confess it with your mouth and believe with your heart, because believing is in the heart, confession is in the mouth or through the mouth. Now, we need to understand this word confession. I will spend quite some time, a few, maybe a few Thursdays on this so we can understand. But it is important to understand the word confession. The word confession from the Greek comes from a word, from two words, homo o and logos. Homo o and logos forms a word called homologio. Homologio. So the word confession is translated from the Greek word homologio. And homologio means speaking the same thing at the same time, at the same place, together with God. So confession means that we come to a point where we say what God is saying where we speak what God is saying. And as we speak, God is speaking the same. So today, tonight, as I speak to you, the Lord is speaking to you. Why? Because I have a heavenly calling seated with Christ in heavenly places and he dwells in me. So here on earth, he uses my mouth, he uses my hands, he uses my feet, and he uses you as too if you are born again. Where is the predicament? Where is the challenge? Hosea 4 and verse number 6. My people perish for lack of knowledge. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. It is ignorance that causes us not to know what has already taken place. Once you know what has taken place and it is, it is stamped, it is sealed in your spirit, you will fear no devil, you will fear no person, you will fear no authority because you know whom you believe. That's why... Even during the peak of persecution, Peter told his persecutors, I am not worthy to die the way my master died on the cross, upside right, right side up. Please crucify me upside down. Crucify me upside down. That's why we read in church history, and tradition that believers were fed. We read it also in the scriptures. They were fed to hungry lions, animals, and they went there singing and praising God. Others were burnt at the stake in stadiums, tied and wood put around them, or stalks put around them, oil poured on them and lit and they burnt to death, singing, not complaining, not yelling, but singing. Why? They saw themselves 
seated with Christ in heavenly places, far above every opposition. That is your position, my brother. That is your position, my sister. You are not just another Kenyan or another American. No, you are a child of God. The very life of God is in you. Christ has accomplished that job. He finished all the work that was supposed to be done. And because he has finished, he declared it is finished. So when the writer to the Hebrews tells us to consider the apostle and the high priest of our profession, is so that we may see what our confession or our profession brings us into. It brings us into a position where no witch can shake you. No wizard can shake you. No trial, no temptation, no persecution can shake you. My friend, the church is not a victim. The church is not a victim of the governing authorities. The church is not a victim of witches and wizards. The church is not a victim of bad men or bad women. I want you to know that the church stands strong. The church stands strong in the revelation of our apostle and high priest. Now, how do we join in? We join in by our profession or confession. Confession does not mean you telling me your sins, coming and telling me you have broken the first commandment and the second and the third and the ninth and the tenth. And then I give you a prayer for you to go and make. Not at all. Not at all. That is opening up. It is opening up your life and your failures. Confession means homologio. You speak the same thing at the same time, at the same place, together with God. In other words, our profession is not complete without God. You cannot, you cannot put on Christ like a coat and put him off at will. No way. When you are born again, you need to know, I am now God's material. I am now a child of God. The blood of Christ flows in my system. I am connected with the Father. This is what I am talking about. And it is important for us to find out what is the foundation of our confession. What is the foundation of our profession? It is important to understand because once we capture this foundation, then you know you are unshakable, you are unbogable. I pray that there arises a team or a group of believers in this nation, especially during this season of the elections, who will stand up and declare what needs to be said and what needs to be, said, to be done. Because we cannot just sit and listen. Someone say that there are small churches and big churches. That small churches need to be closed. They need to be closed. I want to ask you a question. What is the measuring yard of a church? What, what did you use to measure and say this is a small church and this is a big church? It is actually a display of ignorance of the scriptures for anyone to talk about small churches and big churches. Because according to Jesus, he said, if where two or three are gathered in my name, 
I am there in their midst. And the church belongs to Christ. So you cannot talk of a small church or a big church. Why? Because Jesus is waiting for two. And the two, once the two are gathered, or three, he's right there in their midst. If they gather in thousands, he is there in their midst. So please, you have got to rise up as believers and realize we will not see ourselves the way the world looks at us. Don't look at yourself by numbers. If there are two, you have the quorum to bring Christ in that place. And Christ dwells amongst you. And even the so-called big churches, they all started with one, with a dream and a vision. Call it anything. All the names that we give to ourselves, those names are man-made. The church is a spiritual unit. Is a spiritual unit that brings believers together. And the moment the two believers come together, the Lord Jesus is in their midst. So, let us consider this foundation. What is the foundation of our profession? What is the foundation? Now, number one, the church is founded, or our profession, our confession is founded on the faithfulness of the word of God. On the faithfulness of the word. That the word of God abides faithful. It is unchangeable. If you read in John chapter 1, verse number, chapter, chapter 1, verse 1, 2, and 3, you will discover, John writes and says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God, and all things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In the beginning was the word. Now, the word was from the beginning, and up to and including today, the word abides. The word stays strong. This word was God, and this word was with God. And our confession is founded on the faithfulness of the word of God. God. Therefore we know according to 1 Corinthians chapter number 1 verse number 9 God is faithful. If the word was God and God is faithful what does that mean? The word is faithful. And the foundation of our confession is the faithfulness of the word of God. Now, this means that our God is the word. And this word is dependable. If, the, if our God is trustworthy, then it means the word is trustworthy. If God, since God is dependable, it means the word is dependable. Oh, glory to God. I pray that your eyes would be opened to this. Because once you know this, your life will never be the same again. Since God is reliable, the word is reliable. So you can depend on this word. You can rely on this word. You can trust this word. And your situation will change. It is the word that says, I am the Lord that healeth you. It is the word that says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not his benefits, who healeth 
all your diseases. I do not know where you are. I do not know what you are suffering from. But I have the word of the Lord for you that tonight could be the night of your healing. Because the word of God is reliable. It is trustworthy. It is dependable. The word of healing. He says, if you serve me, I will not put, I will not allow the sicknesses which was upon the Egyptians to come upon you. It is the word that says, by the stripes of Jesus, you were healed. So I come with a word of healing tonight. You can depend on this word. You can rely on this word. Healing for your body. Healing for your marriage. Healing for your business. Healing for your children. Deliverance for your children from alcohol, from drugs, from immorality, from all evil. Tonight could be the night that you have been waiting for for a long time. Tonight could be the night when we are saying, enough is enough. There has got to be change in your situation. There has got to be change in your marriage. But you have got to be willing. Because there are people who, who, say, who, who would say to me, Bishop, pray for me. Oh, my husband has done this. Oh, my wife is doing this. Oh, my husband has been stolen. Oh, my wife has, uh, has ran away with another man. Oh, my wife is this and the other. Are you willing that there be change in your situation? Are you willing to see change in your marriage? Are you willing to see change in your family? If you are willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. Because the apostle and the high priest of our profession stands by his word to perform it. Now, if you look at your Bible from Isaiah 55, verse, from verse number 9, you will capture what I am saying. He says, for as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Just settle on that, that God is thinking good about you. His ways are higher than ways. When you sit there, you are seeing the grave. You are seeing the bank auctioneering your plot. You are seeing your car being taken away. Now, God's ways are higher than your ways. God will rescue you before the auctioneers come. Call upon him and you will see what he will do for you. Verse number 10 says, For as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven and does not return to heaven, but what does the earth and mix it bring forth and bud that may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater? Just hold on to that. That when the rains come and hits the earth, it does not go back. It will accomplish what it was sent for. What was it sent to do? To water the earth so that the earth and the seed may bud and bring forth, and seed may bring forth. Now, verse number 11, he says, So shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth. My friend, the word of the Lord that is coming to you this day, that is coming to you right now, will not go back void. It shall be, says, so shall my word be that goes out of my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please and it shall prosper in the thing which I sent it to, for or I sent it. I want you to know that the word of the great catch is for you, but you've got to have the right instruments. You have got to have your hook ready. You have got to have your nets ready. Remember, we have been called 
to bring people into the kingdom. Get yourself prepared. The word of the Lord is dependable. The word of the Lord is trustworthy. The word of the Lord is reliable. You can rely on it. That this year is your season of the great catch. This is the year of transformation. May the Lord manifest himself in your situation. May the Lord visit you. Consider the apostle and the high priest of our calling, of our profession, the man Christ Jesus. He is on your side. As we partake of the communion tonight, I want you to know he is out to bring transformation in your situation. He is out to bring change in your situation. Will you receive him tonight? Will you receive the master tonight? Will you open your heart to the master? If you are not born again, I want to say to you, my friend, this is the moment you have been waiting for. Consider the apostle and the high priest of our confession, who is Christ Jesus. Consider him dying on the cross for you. Consider him blessing you in your situation. Consider him bringing deliverance to you right there as we partake of the communion. Let me pray with you, my friend. If you are not born again, please pray with me this prayer and give your life to Jesus. Pray out loudly for everybody to hear and for God to hear and say, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I come to you. Tonight, I acknowledge that I am a sinner. But I, and I also acknowledge that the work done at the cross of Calvary by Jesus Christ was for me. And right now, willingly, I open up my spirit that you may come in and make me your habitation. I receive you tonight as my Lord and my Savior. Because I pray in Jesus' name, amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for this viewer who has prayed that prayer for the very first time. I pray that you put the seal of the Holy Spirit upon their lives. Give them the boldness and the courage to testify that they are born again. And as your servant, I break every bondage over their lives. Every chain that held them, I break it now in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Congratulations, my friend. You are now born again. You can partake of the communion. You are welcome to partake with us in the name of Jesus Christ and to the glory of God. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. If you are a believer, you are now ready for the communion. We will partake of the communion. As we partake of the communion, remember the word, the faithfulness of the word is our, the foundation of our salvation, of our profession, of our confession, of our way, of the church. Now you can stand on that word in the name of Jesus Christ. If you are sick in your body, as we partake of the communion, you shall receive your healing. Your discouragement, your discouragement is being wiped away as we partake of the communion in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter number 11 and verse number 23. For I, have, I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take it, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Our Father and our God, we thank you for the broken body of Jesus Christ. As we partake of the communion tonight, Lord, let the reality of your revelation dawn in the life of every individual in the name of Jesus Christ. 
In the same manner, he also took the cup of the supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Our Father, we thank you for the blood that was shed for the remission of our sins, for our deliverance from poverty, our deliverance from say of will, our deliverance from sicknesses and diseases. As we partake of the communion tonight, let your healing power flow in the lives of your people. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Now the scriptures tell us to wait for one another, so please may you serve your family right now. May you serve your family right there where you are. And now that everybody has been served, let us partake of the bread. Let us partake of the cup. And as we partake of the cup, release your faith for your healing. Our Father and our God, we want to thank you for the blood of Jesus that was shed at the cross of Calvary. Thank you for your word that is alive, ever living, powerful, and sharper than any two-edged sword. That Lord, we can rely on this word. Even as we consider the apostle and the high priest of our calling, we stand on the power of the word. As we declare the word, confess the word, Lord, it is working in the lives, in our lives and in our bodies. Right now, my friend, receive your healing right there where you are. Release your faith for the healing, the healing of your family, healing of your children, healing of your marriage, healing of your finances. May the chief apostle, may the chief apostle visit you in your situation and bring a complete turnaround tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Receive your miracle, my friend. It is now time to worship the Lord with our substance. I want you to know that worship is not complete until you place your offering at the altar. Your sacrifice, your tithe, your gift, you place it at the altar and you complete the worship. Our God is a giver and he expects us to be givers. And because we are doing this through, through the social media and the internet, you can use our M-Pesa pay bill number. Our M-Pesa pay bill number is right there on the screen. One of them for the, for the House of Bread and the Majestic City. You, the account is tithe, offering, sacrifice, or other. Once you have done that, please send me your confirmation on my number. Or you can do a direct transfer from your account your bank account to the church account. And the church account number is right there on the screen. Majestic City and the House of Bread. The accounts are in Equity Bank. Or you can use the Equity Bank and Pesa Pay Bill number. And the, uh, the church account is on the screen. You use the 247247, then the church account is on the screen. Then send me the confirmation. All easy. You can write a check, payable, to Deliverance Church, LCCI, or Deliverance Church, Majestic City. And we shall receive it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You are also welcome to our worship services. Our worship services are in two locations. One at the House of Bread on Hel Sarasi Avenue at the KPCU building. Right to the end, you will find us there on second floor. Our services are power packed. We spend time praying and worshiping God. Every Sunday, 8 a.m. at the House of Bread and 10.30, we do our second service there. Then the next location is found on Kangudo Road. On Kangudo Road, after Roy, Roy stage number 26, around there, you will see a white tent on your left. If you are coming from, on the right, if you are coming from Roy, and uh, you will see it there, the Majestic City Church. The Majestic City Church, 
that's where we are every Sunday 10 30 our worship service starts there power packed service where the word of God is taught in simplicity preached under the anointing and lives are being transformed please don't miss it we love you and we value you then every Thursday night is our communion night Every Thursday night is our communion night from 8.15. We come right into your home and bring you the communion. Thank you so very much. May the Lord bless you. We'll see you on Sunday morning and we'll get to you on Thursday night. Remember, this is the year of the great catch. If you have not gotten your sticker for the great catch, order one. And your life will never be the, the same again. God bless you. I love you and I value you. This is your, pa your pastor and your friend, Bishop Mark Karaoke, for a long time. God bless you.